Hi there, my name is Simon Levet and I'm the Centre Manager at the ABC Assessment Centre and today we're going to demonstrate how to install a wind post correctly to manufacturer specifications. And today I'm here with Ian Mitchell and Ian's going to help me with the practical part of today's install. So uh, Ian, if you could just uh, say a couple of words about yourself and your uh, experience within construction and how you're going to help me out today. Thank you Simon. So yeah, I bring 30 years of experience in the construction industry, um, three years as a bricklaying apprenticeship, 17 years on site gaining further knowledge, uh, moved on to a site manager's role and then a contract manager's role. Um, so as I said previously, uh, 30 years construction experience to help with this uh, training video. Thank you, Simon. Fantastic, thanks Ian. Um, and uh, so before we begin to start our installation procedures today, we're just gonna talk for a second about what wind posts are and why we use them in construction. So, what is a wind post? Well, wind posts are a vertical structural support that protects and supports our masonry infill panels from horizontal loads, such as wind loads or the forces from within a building that we call crowd loads or handrail loads. Their location within the fabric of a building is determined by structural engineers based on their exposure to these forces. And they can sit either within the cavity, bridging the cavity and tying in the two leafs, or just in the inner skin of block work. Although the installation of wind posts is often subbed out to steel fixing firms who specialize in this kind of thing, it's often the responsibility of the bricklayer because setting out your block work is integral to the installation procedure, as is bedding in ties at compliant intervals. This video accompanies the ABC Assessment Centre's short course on wind post installation, uh, which goes into a little bit more detail on the types of posts there are and also their fixing details as well. Before we crack on with the install procedure, let's have a look at some health and safety considerations. some health and safety considerations to take into account before installing wind posts. Depending on the number of courses of block work that they need to restrain, wind posts can be as small as 10 kilograms in weight or as massively heavy as 400 kilograms. Therefore, always seek mechanical means of lifting if it's heavier than a two-person lift. The wind post we're installing today is just under two meters, meaning that Ian and I can happily transport this from uh, one place to the work phase. However, if it's any bigger than that, please do seek other methods of transportation, whether it be a flatbed trolley, a bogey, a pallet truck, or even a forklift. During construction, set an exclusion zone one and a half times the size of the wind post, uh, just in case it falls, uh, so it does no damage to anyone else in the surrounding area. If mechanically lifting with a block and tackle or roustabout, always inspect prior to use and do dummy lifts. For example, checking the strops and straps and any kind of imperfections that need to be reported to a supervisor if they are found to be defective. If installing from mutes, make sure that they are fit for purpose and have been checked and inspected prior to use. And other than that, just check that you have a generally clean and tidy work area that is free from slips, trips and falls hazards. All of these can be found in the RAMS document and the lift plan, which you should consult before undertaking any part of the installation procedure. Before we go any further in this video, it's worth pointing out the personal protective equipment or PPE that you must wear when on site, because without wearing this personal protective equipment, you cannot even get to the point where you're doing the installation similar to that that we're doing on the video today. So what do I mean by PPE? Well, it's a five point PPE and myself and Ian here have the correct five point PPE, which consists of hard hat, glasses, high-vis vest, gloves, and steel toe cap boots. Remember, there are some jobs on site or some tasks that require additional PPE and information related to these can all be found in the RAMS document.
Okay, so welcome over to the ABC Assessment Centre equipment table, where I'm going to show you all the things that we're going to need for our uh, installation of wind posts today. An L-shaped wind post, head cleat for our wind post. Now we have our head cleat bolts, single and double-sided ties for wind posts, an SDS drill, magnetic drill, spanner and torque wrenches, a hammer, a blind bolt, anchors, a chalk line, a marker, a level, As always, the first part of the installation procedure is setting out. Now it's worth noting that for the purposes of this video, we're just installing one wind post in one location. But in a site environment, you may be installing several. That's why it's super important to make sure that you're setting out each wind post to their exact location on the architect's drawings. Today, we're down at New City College in North London, where we are performing the install uh, on our training frames that were designed and manufactured by ACS Stainless Steel Fixings. Ian is now dry bonding three blocks in from the right hand side goal post to confirm the position of the wind post. As you can see, Ian and I are now moving the wind post into position and lining up the front of the base plate with the mark we've made on the floor, making sure the spine part of the post is butted up against the block next to it. Ian is now marking the drilling points on the ground through the base plate, ensuring the wind post remains upright by plumbing and then lining up the head cleat and marking the fixing position on the underside of the hollow steel crossbeam. It is important that this is done before drilling for the base plate fixings as this is key for alignment. Now that we've accurately set out the position of our wind post, and marked the three fixing points, let's go ahead and get them drilled. Because we're drilling into both steel and concrete, we need to use two types of drill for this installation. As I mentioned earlier, we use a magnetic drill or mag drill to drill into steel, in this case, our hollow steel section or RSJ. And then we need to use an SDS drill with a masonry drill bit to drill into the floor. So let's start with the mag drill procedure. Once you're connected to a power source, you can offer the magnetic base of the drill up to the steel that you're drilling into. Ian is now flicking the on off switch to activate the drill and is slowly rotating the handles towards the drilling point and into the steel. Okay, so two pieces of advice when you're operating this kind of drill. Number one is take your time and do not push too hard, i.e. when you're rotating the handles to uh, drill into the steel, do not do so too quickly as the drill bit could overheat and you risk doing damage to the drill. And this is a quite expensive piece of kit, so I would not advise that. Point number two is to wear always, always, always the correct PPE for the job. Now you'll notice that shards of steel come off the drill bit when drilling, we do not want these in our eyes, so always protect your eyes with the correct PPE and make sure that we are doing this in the safest way possible. Now that Ian has gone through the hollow steel, he is retracting the handle to the back position, turning the power switch off, and when in position to fully support the weight of the drill, deactivating the magnet. Never release the magnetic clamp before the drill is switched off. This is a note of caution. In order to drill into the floor, we can't just use a normal combi drill. We must use an SDS drill. SDS stands for slotted drive shaft, meaning 
that the drill bit slots into the chuck as opposed to being fixed under rotative compression. Also, the difference is that there is a hammer action which allows the drill to be used for more resistant materials such as concrete. The first thing to say is that when drilling into concrete, we must put on our dust mask which is our task-specific PPE, as well as either ear defenders or ear plugs, which should also be worn whilst we're drilling. You also need to adopt a strong and sturdy stance while drilling to allow you to control the drill and also to ensure that you're drilling at 90 degrees to the floor and that your drill bit is going in straight. As you can see, Ian has adopted a solid base for drilling and is starting to drill into the concrete floor. In order to avoid overheating, you should operate the SDS drill at low speeds and ideally not exceed 1200 RPM. You should also resist the temptation to push down excessively on the drill whilst in operation, as this could again overheat the drill bit and could lead to you snapping off the bit while it's in the hole. When you have reached the required depth for your bolts or anchors, withdraw the drill and repeat the process for the second fixing point for your base plate. Once you've used a hole puffer to remove any concrete dust and debris and added some resin if a chem fix is required, set the anchors into the holes through the base plate. As you can see, Ian is initially knocking the bolts in with a hammer and then tightening with the spanner or wrench to the point where they are hand tight. The final step is taking a calibrated torque wrench and securing the anchors to the floor to the torque setting specified by the manufacturer. Now that we have set out our wind post correctly, drilled the three holes we needed, fixed the base plate that is rooted into position on the ground we can move on to the formality of fixing the head cleat to the RSJ. By the time you get to this stage, you've done effectively most of the hard work. However, we must make sure that we are installing the head cleat correctly. As you can see, the head cleat has a slot that allows for plenty of vertical adjustment, which means it should be quite simple to hand tighten the specified fixings in the correct position, leaving a fixing point for the expansion bolt into the underside of the hollow steel. Now that we've offered up the head cleat and hand tightened it, let's check for plumb one last time and get the expansion bolt in. As you see, this requires knocking the head of the fixing through the steel with a hammer. Now this is in, Ian is now taking a torque wrench and as before, is tightening the remaining three fixings according to the manufacturer's specification. Okay, so we've installed a sturdy wind post between steel and concrete, and I think we've done a pretty good job. However, we can't call it a day just yet, as we need to think about installing wall ties from the wind post into the block work at compliant intervals. So what are these intervals then? Well, they're every 225 millimeters or the height of a block. Now this is made a little bit easier because the wind post has vertical slots that correspond with the height of each block. So it would be quite easy for us to gauge our block work and slip in the ties where necessary. As you can see, Ian is demonstrating the location of the first tie above the first course of block work and slotting it into position as per the ACS system we're demonstrating today. Notice there are ties for one side and both sides of the wind post. You just need to repeat this process for every course of block work for the entire height of the wind post and you'll have successfully integrated a wind post into the fabric of a building. Okay, so now we've completed the installation procedure. We've shown you how to set out, drill fix and also 
uh, install into the blockwork skin an L-shaped wind post into the inner leaf of blockwork and also to add in wall ties at compliant intervals. Before we finish, what I wanted to do is just get a few top tips from our professional bricklayer, Ian, and just to give us a little bit of insight into uh, best practice for this kind of installation. So, uh, Ian, what have you got for us? Thank you, Simon. Um, things to consider when we're installing wind posts. Are the wind posts correct as per the drawing? Um, is the wind post installed to the grid line on the uh, construction floor? Uh, are the slots on the wind post adjacent to the fixing points for either the brickwork or the blockwork? Um, and before we arrive, there should have been a risk assessment made for manual handling of the post. Does it need two men? Does it need a mechanical lift? Uh, all things to, to bear in mind. Uh, this isn't a difficult installation, so as bricklayers with the right tools, we could quite easily take this on board. Uh, but yeah, they're the tips to help you um, moving on. So yeah, thank you, Simon. Hopefully it's helpful. Thank you very much, yes. Very helpful indeed. Uh, I hope you found it useful as well. And uh, on behalf of Ian and myself, um, all that's left to say is thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you again very soon for another video.